Hello everybody, in this video what we're going to be doing is setting up DeepSeek R1 on a Raspberry Pi. Now if you're watching this video, you probably already know what DeepSeek is, so I'm not going to dive into it, whether that be the really good stuff or the not so good things about it. What I will say is I would prefer not to use their web version because anything you type to it is saved and logged by servers controlled in China. That being probably the worst thing about it, probably the best thing about it to me is the fact it's open source. We could download it, self-host it. It doesn't need to contact the internet. It's pretty cool. Now this guide does focus here on the Raspberry Pi, but this can be mimicked just about anywhere. It's actually incredibly easy to just install on your desktop, Windows, Linux, or Mac OS operating system. And chances are you will probably get better performance if you do it that way. The main reason I'm doing this on a Raspberry Pi right now is mostly to kind of one, the tutorial, and two, to demonstrate that you can actually run their lowest distilled model on a Pi and get relatively decent performance out of it. And by relatively decent, I mean you'll get output, it just might not be very fast. Now for this, we are going to be using Olama. This is the main download site for this tool. This is what we're going to use to actually run the model. You can see it has a bunch of different options here, including DeepSeek. Uh, there's going to be a script to download this, but before that, if we go to DeepSeek R1 here, you can see all the different models. 7B is their default. It's a pretty good one. It works perfectly fine. Even the 8B one works perfectly fine on this uh, M4 Mac Mini that I'm using. Those models generally give you better results, but they do require better hardware. For the Pi, the 1.5B is what we are going to have to use, and we have a command right here to go ahead and run it. But first, you're going to want to actually download and install DeepSeek. This guide is assuming that you have a Raspberry Pi with some sort of Debian-based operating system on it. This Raspberry Pi is running my personal favorite, which is the latest version of Ubuntu Server. If you have Raspberry Pi OS or something like that, it's going to work fine. And putting whatever operating system you want on a Pi is really easy. You just use the SD card and the Pi Imager. But I'm going to go up in my logs because I've already been testing and playing around with this. After you run a sudo apt update and apt... Oh. First, update and upgrade your system. So that's apt update and apt upgrade. All these commands and everything that I'm using are going to be down below. This right here is the script. It's pretty easy. We want curl. So if you don't have that, go ahead and install it. And we're just pulling the installation script directly from Olama at install sh and just hit that to run it. And it's going to download and install. And when it's completely done, you're going to see this right here. It's going to give you a warning saying it cannot detect any NVIDIA or AMD GPUs. That is fine as it will run in CPU only mode. And that is one of the key reasons why we need to use this smaller model here. So now actually running the model is a pretty simple process. All we need to do is grab this command right here. Llama run DeepSeek R1 1.5B. Minimize that real quick and drop it in here. If it's your first time running it, it's gonna have to download the model. It's pretty small, so it should be pretty quick. But if I just hit enter here, it's gonna load up the model. And like that, we are talking to Deep seek. So I can say something like, hello. It's going to think about it and it's going to give me a pretty generic uh, response. I could ask it uh, kind of a more complex question. Why should I use a GPU with R1? And there we go. So it's going to do what you expect it to do. It's going to go through its entire thought process. I will note here, if I jump into another terminal shell for this Raspberry Pi here, you can see it is cooking it's really using every single drop of resources it has available to come up with this response but it's doing pretty good it's not super quick but it's going quick enough where i can't keep up with reading it now chances are you're not going to want to spend the majority of your time in cli or the command prompt actually interacting with this thing so let's set up a nice little tool called open web ui which will give us something that looks more like the deep seek or even the uh, chat gpt interface and it does give us a little bit more options to do things like upload a pdf to actually analyze that and to do that we are going to launch it in docker so if you do forward slash buy that's how you get out of the model and i do have some stuff here but we're going to ignore that for now I will note, if you're not familiar with Docker, we have a wonderful uh, kind of beginner's guide on what it is. It goes over all the basics that you're going to need at least to get started. So if you have no experience with Docker, I recommend you check out that video. Now, you could do this wherever you want on your system. If I print my working directory, you can see I'm just in my home directory here. For this, I'm just going to make a new directory, and I'm going to call this uh, Open Web UI. 
So then within this open web UI directory, I'm going to change directory into it. And now here I'm going to create a, a new compose YAML file, which is what we're going to use to spin up the Docker container. So nano is my text editor of choice, compose.yaml, and then just copy and paste this. It will be in the description. This is a really simple way to go ahead and run it. Basically all this does is we're going to launch the service open web GUI. It's going to pull the image from this source. We're giving it the container name of open web GUI or UI, sorry, the volumes it's going to point to whenever you see a dot forward slash, that just means the current working directory. So this is going to make a new data folder in that open web UI folder I just created. And this side is just going to point to where the actual app needs to look for this information ports. The first one is the important one. That's 3000. That's the one I'm going to be accessing it from. If you need to change it, you can do not change this end. That is, um, internal port for the actual container that we are going to be launching here. Extra hosts, it's going to need the host Docker internal gateway, allow it to access that. And then we'll restart it unless stopped. Pretty simple. So output that we didn't even need to change anything. Control X. But one thing we are going to need to change is if we launch this now, it's not going to be able to access our Olama or any of the models within it. So we do need to make a slight edit to our Olama service. Paste that in. When you installed Olama using the script from their website, it created something called a system CTL service. It's just kind of a way to have various services and things running in the background. And a lot of these services have configuration files that we could go ahead and edit. So you can see sudo system CTL edit Olama dot service, jump in there. Uh, when you first look at this, you're not going to have this here. Like I said, I was playing around with it earlier. Bop. It's going to look like this and you can see anything between here and the comment below will become contents. So we are going to want to drop in this right here. This is the service. We're going to add the environmental variable Olama host at what is basically local host. So it's allowing Docker to see this service. So we'll output that. And then the first time you do that, we're going to need to restart both the system CTL daemon as well as the Olama service. So this command right here, sudo system CTL daemon reload and system CTL restart Olama. Hit enter. And there we go. Well, now when we launch this uh, Docker container, it will be able to access it and make sure we're still in the same directory. We are. So to actually launch this container, all we need to do is run a Docker compose up dash D compose up launching the contents of the compose file and D detached, meaning it's going to be running in the background for us. So hit enter. You can see it created the network basically so it can see the Olama service and then it created the container open web GUI or UI. I keep saying GUI. So now within our web browser here, I am going to click, oh, not right there. I'm going to click right here and then paste in my local URL and then the port 3000 or not the, the URL of the machine we just installed this on, which is the Pi. Hit enter. Oh, let's give it access and try that again. And there we go. So you're going to get something that looks like this. We're just going to click on get started. And here you're going to fill out your name, email, and all that fun stuff. This is all local. So you can put whatever you want. There we go. So once you have everything filled in, we could go ahead and create our admin account. It's going to give us some new stuff. I do recommend you read it and check it out. We're going to be just scraping the service of this tool. There's really a lot it can do. But there we go. And we can see right here up in the top, we have our models to select. Just for giggles, I did try the uh, the 7B model. Wouldn't recommend it. So I'm going to select the model that we downloaded, the 1.5B. And then we can interact with it right here, just as we were in the terminal. For example, if I just use one of these, maybe show me a code snippet of a website sticky header in both CSS and JavaScript. So if I hit send, it's going to think about it. And actually, if I go ahead and open up tabby here, you could see that it is definitely working. Uh, the response might be a little slow. We could still see the thinking process here if we click this. So it's thinking and thinking through everything. If we don't want to see that, you could hide it. One kind of cool thing about this uh, uh, Docker container that we spun up here. And it's been about a minute. It's still going, but you could see it is outputting quite a bit here to uh, accomplish that goal. And you can kind of see the speed of it. So it's not moving too fast. And just, just for comparison's sake here, uh, I'm going to copy this and show you the speed locally on, uh, on this Mac. So if I bring this up and we, let's open a new tab here, we could do uh, DeepSeek R1, which is even a better model. This is the uh, 7B model. So we're going to run it locally here real quick and then paste in this message, hit enter. 
give it a second to kind of start and you can see how much quicker it is even with the better model on the uh, m4 mac mini here versus is it still thinking about it yeah versus this right here and again this is a better model so we're probably going to get a slightly better result in this uh, html file it's going to create here so sticky header styles this is javascript css styling so yeah it's a, definitely a little bit different and yeah here it here it goes this probably took it or once it tells me what's going on here probably took it about 45 seconds to render this out versus like three or four minutes with the pi on the smaller model so i cleared out that chat because it was taking way too long and what we're going to do now is hopefully something that doesn't take even longer is upload a pdf and ask it to kind of analyze it for us so i'm going to upload a random file and i found this right here I, it's the only pdf i have on my system so i'm probably going to have to like blur out most of the output but let's say can you summarize select our model and send the message 1054 let's see how long it actually takes yeah, I'm gonna have to blur all this out. <laughs> I'm not gonna show you, but it worked pretty good. About three minutes it took it. Actual use practicality is eh. There was an ACH payment that was made, provided by this company to this company for the product being described as uh, the product with a total price of the price. So, so it works pretty good. Again, like I said in the beginning of the video, doing this on better hardware is gonna give you better results and it's gonna be much quicker. But if you have a Raspberry Pi that you just want to throw this up on, have a nice little chat UI you can access from anywhere on your home network, this is great. Yeah, that's how you do it. Again, everything I mentioned will be linked down below. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.